previously we learned how to solve quadratic equations using factoring. Uh, today we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations using square roots. And square roots might be a more efficient and easier method than factoring. And we're going to get to the point at, uh, at some time where you're just going to be asked to solve an equation and you will have to determine which one, which method is most efficient. And since we learned how to simplify radicals the other day, we can use that knowledge for solving these square root equations. So when we solve this equation, we want to get x by itself. And with factoring, we, we got everything to one side. But with square root uh, equations, we want the x squared on one side, and we want the number on the other side. You'll notice that there's no x to the first power. There's no b term. Solving by square roots is efficient when you don't have a b term. Because you can divide by the number in front of x. Whoops. And this is going to give us x squared equals uh, 80 divided by 5 is 16. And then when you square root both sides, we get x. You may think, oh, x equals 4. However, when we take the square root to solve, you know, right here, and I'll outline it in purple, right here, we had to take the square root to solve this problem. We square rooted both sides. When we have to do that, we need to do plus or minus that answer. So this actually has two solutions, positive 4 and negative 4. And having two solutions to a quadratic equation shouldn't be uh, unnatural because that's what we did for factoring. And watch, if we plug in 4, okay, we get 80. And if we plug in negative 4, we also get 80 because negative 4 squared is a positive number. So just make sure whenever you take the square root to solve, you worry about plus or minus. If the square root is already part of the problem that you're trying to solve, then you don't need to worry about uh, plus or minus as much. This problem, first we need to add 16 to both sides because we want to get 2x squared equals 34 plus 16 is 50. Divide both sides by 2. x squared equals 25. And now we are taking the square root to solve this. We get x equals plus or minus 5. Now this problem, we need to first multiply by 1 fourth on both sides to get rid of this. So we have x minus 6 squared equals 1 fourth times 8 is 2. Now we cannot add 6 to both sides right here because that 6, that minus 6, is inside parentheses. So what we have to do is we have to square root both sides to get rid of the second power. So the second power and the square root cancel out. And we are left with x minus 6, you know, whatever left was on the inside whatever was left on the inside equals plus or minus 2. So this is kind of like what we had to do in absolute value uh, equations, where we had to break this up into two separate equations to solve. So we're going to have x minus 6. x minus 6 equals 2. And x minus 6 equals negative 2. And then when we add 6 to both sides, we get x equals 8 is one of our solutions. And the other one is x equals uh, positive 4 by adding 6 to both sides. So this is something else that students will typically mess up is that they'll try to add 6 to both sides right here before taking the square root. Um, you know, in this case, we did not have plus or minus, you know, 5, plus or minus 4, or plus or minus the same number. We had two different numbers. Now let's look down here where we need to solve these as, as well. So let's add 8 first. You know, we're going to add 8 before we divide by 5 because we want to go in the reverse order of operations when we solve. Um, 
which means we actually undo addition and subtraction first before we undo multiplication. So we have 5 times x plus 1 squared equals 20. Divide both sides by 5, and we get x plus 1 squared equals 4. So we square root both sides, and the squared and the square root cancel. We get um, x plus 1 equals plus or minus 2. And then we need those two separate equations, x plus 1 equals negative 2, and x plus 1 equals positive 2. And then when we subtract x, uh, sorry, we subtract 1 from both sides, we get x equals negative 3, and we get x equals positive 1 as my two solutions. This next problem over here, uh, we're going to notice that you're, you're going to get a radical. Um, divide both sides by 4. We get x minus 1 squared equals 2. And then when we square root both sides, this time the square you can't take the square root of 2 and get a whole number. So we have to leave it as a radical. Unlike here, when we took the square root of 4, that's a perfect square. We got whole numbers. The square root of 2 is not a perfect square, so we're going to leave it alone. And that is going to give us x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 2. It's the same thing. x minus 1 equals negative square root of 2. And x minus 1 equals the positive square root of 2. Now, when we add 1 to both sides... The 1 does not go under the radical. You remember we talked about this before that you can't just combine radicals and whole numbers. we got to keep them separate. When we add 1 to both sides, it's going to be x equals 1 minus the square root of 2. And over here, when we add 1 to both sides, it's going to be x equals 1 plus the square root of 2. So those would be the two answers. Like I said, we cannot combine them. So those would be where we stopped, and that would be that. Okay. Now, with this one, again, we want to add 6 to both sides. We get x squared over 25 equals 4. To undo that division, we're going to multiply both sides by 25. And we get x squared equals 100. And when we square root both sides, this one is going to be nice and easy for us. x equals plus or minus 10. If you wanted to, you could write x equals 10 and x equals negative 10. Um, it doesn't matter to me which way you write it. So now we're going to look at something called vertical motion problems. And vertical motion is talking about the, the height of an object um, t seconds after it has been dropped or launched or whatever the problem says. The equation for that is negative six, h equals negative 16t squared plus v times t plus c or that, and remember c is our y-intercept or our starting height or initial value. v, this is going to be the initial speed or initial velocity and c is going to be our initial height now if an object is dropped v is equal to zero think about it if i have an object and i drop it at the instant that it's dropped the velocity or speed is zero now, yes, it's going to change rather quickly, but we're talking about that, that instant that we let go of the object, it was starting at rest, so its initial velocity is zero, and then the, you know, the acceleration due to gravity changed the speed after that. So let's look at these problems down here. It says a water balloon is dropped up from window 59 feet above the sidewalk. How long does it take for the water to hit the sidewalk? So our equation, h of t, is going to be negative 16t squared plus 0t, and our initial height was 59 feet. And again, 0t because I dropped the water balloon. Dropped 0t. We don't need to worry about that 0t anymore because 0 times anything is 0. Also, the height 
of the balloon once it hits the sidewalk is zero. So my equation will simplify to this. I also notice up here it says round answers to the nearest hundredth. So we are going to type these into our calculator and get a, a decimal answer. So we'll solve this by adding 16 t squared to both sides. And then we'll divide by 16. Um, 59 divided by 16 is going to be 3.69. And then when we square root that, we're going to get we're going to get two answers because we are taking the square root whoops 3.69 is 1.92 so t equals plus or minus 1.92 now we also need to go back and think about in this problem does it make sense to have negative time? You know, we, we've talked about this before. It never makes sense to have negative time. So the only thing we're worried about is the 1.92 seconds, the positive answer. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to look at this one here, and I want you to try to figure it out or try to solve this on your own using what we just did and see what you get. Pause the video, try it, and once you're done, unpause it so you can see how you did. All right, so unpause the video and see what you got and compare it to mine. Um, hopefully you got the same answer that I did. If not, you can kind of see where my work is and um, see what you messed up with. So thanks for watching the video. I, this was a short and sweet topic. Um, Make sure to like this video and subscribe.